Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Tiamo Telezi, popularly known as Tia Smith. Um, welcome back to my channel, guys. For those of you guys that are regular regulars, regular subscribers, regular likers, I love and appreciate you guys so much. And for those of you that are here for the very first time, welcome to my YouTube channel, guys. Like I like you. You guys should just go into the comment section and see there are people that join us for the very first time and get so obsessed. They like I am here to stay. Um, I've been on YouTube for a few months now, I think about three, four months now, and I'm enjoying it here. Um, today's video is very special and very dear to my heart. It's a video that I've done before, but I was still so young, man. I did that video in 2019. That's about three years ago. Um, I did it and the video was just very all over the place. And I was just like, mm, I had to remove it. I was young and it was a video that was just very much in demand and i just felt like ah let me release it but it really was all over the place for a video that was so sacred and dear to my heart so today is a saturday i am going to inconvenience gogo so gogo my guy is going to suck in soweto so his gojo is um how can i call it an academy for my son I think that's how it makes sense. Some of these things can't really be translated, but I'll try my best. So I'm going there um, and I'm going to take you guys along. So as I was getting ready and getting done, I was like, mm, how about I actually give you guys insight, not like like forefront insight information about what's going on or where I am going and how I came about that stuff. Um, so let me just sit down um, talking talk to you guys. And then, um, should the time come, get like then you guys will see where I'm going, how things are done. Um, just to see what I've done a little bit, um, yeah, that type of thing. So, um, I'm going there today, I'm just about to leave the house. Um, I think I'll also just show you guys there a diagonal where they get ama pie and stuff. So, I need um, ihiya ipai, which is a traditional cloth just to come over i am wearing a black skirt and top i'm just wearing this because um i'll explain it later but i'm just wearing it because my other clothes some are getting washed some yeah, is stored, but i need to get new ones and there are some that i had to collect that i've just been like delaying and delaying so i just felt like i will get them today all right so um let's start so i some of you have heard the story before. I recently spoke about it on a live. If you follow me on Instagram, I spoke about it on a live the other day. But I'm going to keep it brief and short for those of you that have never heard the story before. But see, I'm going to talk about my personal experience. I don't know about other people. I'm just going to talk about my personal experience. El Rosini, how it started, when, who helped me, what I know now. Um, and yeah. So this started in 2016. 17 no 2016 was my first year of high school um i went to boarding school in Pumalanga, and the school catered for us um religiously so um sorry guys my alex is doing a number on me but um they catered for us in the sense that every wednesday they would get different pastors from different churches to just come and minister to us so Basically, um, if you're ZTC, they'd get a ZTC pastor. If you're Muslim, they'd get a Muslim priest. If you're like Christian, like just different types of churches. I think we had like maybe like nine different churches. But every Wednesday morning, there was time for that. Kind of a city time. But I went to an Afrikaans medium school, right? Chutz Deans. I think something like that. But that's what we had every Wednesday. And, um, then i'm just gonna fast forward to just when everything started so the pastor that i went to was more of a um, i don't know what to call it but it was a christian christian pastor you know so he would come um and preach to us every wednesday he'd have like a certain topic a certain sermon and we really resonated with him like he was a he was a good guy man besides everything else he was a good guy he spoke really well, ministered really well. Like in Jay, all the girls were hooked. Well, let's see, we're in a cult in Jay. The whole squad used to go to him. Great. If you're black in Jay and you're a girl and, you know, so I'm going to say, I'm not going to call his name. Out of respect. So I'm going to give him a name, Upasta Emmanuel, you know. 
So Pastor Emmanuel would come, pastor, and minister to us, and it was all great until I started getting what he would call demonic attacks. Or what I would later know was a trance or a spiritual awakening. So every time he would preach, not every time, but solo would be like more regular than not. Um when he'd preach being vulgar but I didn't know what it was at that time. But I let me just explain it. So he would preach, preach, and then I'd feel it. I'd get emotional, get emotional, get emotional. Like it feels like why is there not saying properly? It feels like I was getting emotional, like you know when you like when you've got like a lump in your throat and then you just feel like mm, 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 something's up and then i just start hysterically crying i won't understand it and like i would come down when i want to come down not j you know i would come down when it decides to come down so i'd go outside excuse myself go and drink water because i just cried so hysterically and i didn't understand what was going on so fast forward it would happen more like like re like religiously everyone was just like i was go being dramatic or what and i just needed help um and i just excused myself it was very awkward and uncomfortable and then until the one time pastor emmanuel called me aside and he was like girl you have demonic attacks like you're getting demonic attacks and um we need to get that sorted so for background sake why everyone believed the demonic story was that um, I was a girl from Johannesburg and I was I moved to it was that oh I was in the entertainment industry at the time So I was an actress and I had a very popular ad that, that had just been released or was airing at the time and I was just like the Beyonce of I was a Beyonce school and I'm not gonna deny it. I was just that girl from Johannesburg with this um, English surname pretty Omega Beyonce So it was that thing of um, I'm in the entertainment industry. I'm from Joburg all those all those theories and um what do you call these things myths or whatever it was Wooten J. hi girl your industry is hacked or whatever and ish guys i know i'm rambling but that was just that so it was very easy to believe it was a girl from johannesburg had demonic attacks you know fine he was like no he's gonna pray over it and he's gonna pray for me one two three one two three shop fast forward um i was in boarding school right so i could only leave like on weekends so we had another friend of ours he had a house, Umchita. He was more like an older brother because his grandmother lived two houses away from my dad's house, Egas. Right? So he was more like an older brother. Um, I'll give him another name. He passed away, may so rest in peace. So at the time, so Tikamalaki was Buddha. Yeah, well, so Spuda had a house, um, and we would go to Spuda's house. Spuda invited us over for like a house party. Spuda invited us over for a house party. Oh, say, uh, we drink, 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 and then fast forward. Buddha had a bathroom, like a, a guest toilet, and he had a toilet in his bedroom. Right? The guest bedroom, the, the the guest toilet did not have tissue, so I needed to use the, the 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 toilet in his room. Right? And like he wasn't aware. Fine. I get into the room. And I am met by Umsam. So those of you that don't know Umsam, Umsam was like a mini altar that you have in your house. For example, if this is my room, that corner over there would be Umsam Owami, a sacred place. Like not a lot of people have to walk in and have access to it. And that's why I keep like clamping my dilami, my candles, impepo yami. Impepo is like our well, traditional incense. Um, I'll just insert a picture. You, you find your impepo. I'll give an example of what Umsam is. So I walked in, I saw Umsam at at the time i didn't know what umsamo was you know i wasn't raised like that i was raised very christian very catholic went to a catholic school in so when i saw that with like red candles and stuff i was just like nah, this nigga is definitely into witchcraft you know and then um i went to the bathroom but like there was something in me when i saw lomsamo that changed like there was just something in me that moved you know like it, it, i could have easily just went into the bathroom and came out but there was just something in me that paid special attention to um lomsamo loy okay fine when i came out he started a fight so he didn't he was actually uncomfortable with me going into the room rightfully so yeah but started a fight so i went to his room into his room wada, wada, wada. and then right after that it was evil okay but at the time we thought it was a demonic attack like no one understood it but it was one of those demonic attacks i start i get hysterical i start crying so then the people at the house party thought to go together 
I'm being dramatic or like why am I crying because now this gent is confronting me and stuff like that so it was because see unfortunately my cousin was there who went to church with me and school and knew what these things happened so she's like you know guys I come down she'll be fine she'll be fine whatever I Uncle Mbwapela, the party ended we went home fast forward to the following week um we were in church and then i'm just gonna give you guys more background information at the time i had my period for about like three months and non-stop yeah but so at first i thought it was maybe like contraceptives and um, that i had started my mom put me on to, uh, contraceptives i think in grade 10 my mom personally dragged me to the clinic and she's like you're gonna start contraceptives so i thought i'm clampy it was contraceptives or something like that so Jay, i don't know what it was but i used to miser it I'd, I'd continue putting my pads on whatever go to school shop that specific Wednesday, now this is the Wednesday after the party, right? The pastor starts preaching about the issue of the woman with the blood who touched the hem of Jesus. I'll also insert the scripture. For those of you that don't really know the Bible, can't blame me. You know? So um, he touched on that subject and demonic attacks started over again. Okay, let me stop calling them demonic attacks. Because you guys already know right now that I would get into a spiritual trance. Which at the time, I didn't know. Yeah, boy? So I get into that, I start crying, whatever. And then Pastor Amanda was like, this thing is getting serious. Like, we need to pray over you, for you, whatever. I come to my church after school. So more background information. At the boarding school, we were allowed to go to town only on Wednesdays um, to go shop, shop for a few things. I was like, all right, perfect. I'll go to the pastor's church after, what, like pastor's church after school. Get there, I pray, na, 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 na. After school, after I go to the pastor's thing, um, Spuda calls me, he's like, yo, dude, uh, Ramas Buddha and I weren't like on not like we're not on sharp terms because of the incident that happened at his house. Okay, fine. Spuda's like, eh, hey, dude, I need to talk to you. Um, meet me like when I'm like I'm at church. He's like, okay, I'll come pick it up. Get into Spuda's car. Spuda's like, eh, hey, dude, you know what happened? So let's like backtrack to Msamwa Spuda. So Spuda was gifted biting a man so with water. So Spuda would go to like a river or a dam, collect the water in a bucket, come home and pray over it. And as he would pray, Upatla, which is to appease your ancestors, communicate with your ancestors, his water would move, right? It was his way of spiritually communicating with his ancestors. Fast forward, he's like, yo, dude, at the time that you walked into my Msamwa or my holy place or my bedroom, I was in the middle of like a journey, a spiritual journey, and my water would communicate or respond when I communicate with it, right? The water would like somehow respond. And if someone had disturbed the process or walked into the room or seen it or whatever, it, it was supposed to happen that when I went back to the water, it would just be still like my whole process would be ruined. But see, the following day, which was like a Sunday, I went back to um, Msamo. I tried trying my luck and the water responded even more and i was confused and then it was mother's day so this was around me on the same day in the afternoon his mom came to the house to come and see him i think he was hosting his mother for lunch and then the mom Avuguerit, was in the same spot that i did so she basically had a trance in the same spot that i did a few days ago and when the mom Avuguerit trance like she starts she started speaking she's like i see a girl here I see her crying she actually needs help help her out who is she blah blah so he explains to his mom because there was a girl that was here in Lili Valley. this is what happened to her but we thought she was just being traumatic so the mom's like no you actually need to help her um and then they went to Ukokwake because like it was mother's day so they went to his grandmother who also happens to be Isangom so when they get there he explains the whole thing about his water he was confused why his water did not like stop right and then the girl explained what you know that girl that was actually at your house is very gifted but actually just needs help like she's lost and she needs help and just go and talk to her and find out what's happening clampe you were used to like help her out or whatever fine so that's what he explains what to do i think you've got a calling this is what's happening to you and it's not demonic attack so i call my mom and i'm like dude this is what i just discovered apparently i've got a calling ganji 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 and um I don't understand my mom was like girl i don't know you know we don't do these things we don't practice these things i just i don't know so um talk to your grandmother my grandma my maternal grandmother Uisangom, not the one who gave birth to my mom but her older sister um my mom was named after her so oh, Coco Pesi. so Coco Pesi, i call her and then she's like yo you actually do have a calling i did know about it but i was waiting for you to discover it because it was going to be awkward if i called you and i'm like hey dude unobizo and whatever it was going to be very uncomfortable so i was waiting for you to discover it yourself and then come back and then i can help you 
so it's like yeah melu path so i'm gonna explain the path the path is basically to go to msamo your spiritual place or room or spot light your candles lighting paper with a bit of snafe snafe king snafe snafe guys um into some call it into and then you speak to your ancestors so you basically pray to god this is my process different or others i pray to god whatever i need to pray and then i ask him for permission to go down to my ancestors and talk to them and then yeah, my visa again with my surnames, my names, and then I talk to them and say whatever I want to. This I know now, but then I didn't. But Gogo explained it to me. So Usbuda at the time had in Beppo, and then went to my friend. We got the candles, and two and matches. Mind you, I was staying at boarding school at the time. So I got back to boarding school at night, and then fortunately I wasn't sharing, so I stayed in my own room. Also, backstory: I used to have a roommate at the time, but we fought so much, so much that i had to be moved to a separate room and the boarding school the hostel was full i got moved into a storeroom <laughs> it was seven and eight like i mean they didn't they didn't punish me that much but they basically moved me from a proper room decent room to a storeroom at the bottom they don't see shoe box it looked like a shoe box but they put in my one bed they put in a cupboard for me on a side table so that's where i stayed so I only got to understand the journey later on, why I was moved from people, why I had fights with people unnecessarily, why I just had to be secluded to my own space and everything just happens at the right time. Yeah, boy. So fine, um, I moved to that room. So I was staying alone in that room in the storeroom. Hey, people that went to high school with me will know that I stayed in the storeroom. But I made it look pretty. I made it work. You know me, I put in my fancy pillows, whatever, I made it work. So I was able to light a candle, light my incense, whatever, and talk to them remember the issue of the woman with the blood and i had my period for oh, my husband is back and i'm gonna have to go quickly let me wrap this up um i i prayed i passed and i told them this is me i hear you guys are calling me what do you want but i was like i'm listening because i'm telling them, i'm listening um like he, they must just lead me and guide me following day i wake up dude no period like you know when i go to sleep at night i change my pad go to sleep la, la, la. i woke up in the morning there was nothing so this was my first sign that the bible does go hand in hand with Elus because that story of the woman of the blood was an issue that i had and as soon as i touched the hem of jesus which was in Zebens, i got i got healed right so then um that was the beginning that was how i found out that was how i acknowledged it that was how i yeah, that was how basically everything started. So then I Hi. I got a little bit distracted there, but see, so um yeah, and that's where everything started. That's how I found out, that's how I got healed, that's how I started believing. And in my quest of growing up, then I started um, seeing people, consulting, wanting to find out more about what's going on, what's you know, like Mubani, who am I? what are you guys saying so i i then developed an, i had a guide i had a coco she stayed in in Pumala. so i'd go and visit to coco and then i'd see her she would initiate other students and i just i always enjoy being in indumba indumba is a consultation room basically so i'd enjoy that i'd enjoy finding out things of the past things of the present and you know talking to a stranger who'd be like this is your life one two three and four this is what happened to your mother when she passed away this is whatever and this lady was a complete stranger so that's when i was like this is some interesting stuff and i really want to like find out Zoti, what's going on whatever and that just started shaping my life guiding my life um i was able to pray i was able to see some things in advance like be told and be warned prevent some things and that's where my favor just started i remember a month or two after that situation in the in my room in hostel i got the ring of life's job and i was just in grade 11 working in between joburg and um, school that's where my acting career kind of like you know so things started opening up i i used to get paid like real really good money for someone who was just like 16 i'd earned like 16 15k so in my lng is something that just started at a young age that i started earning at a young age i guess yeah well but in jay everything just started happening like very well and things started going good and yeah so growing up then i had a guy Lugoko, who would cleanse me if need be who would um teach me how to pray and pasha or teach me about different cloths different candles that type of thing 
And then when I moved back to Johannesburg for varsity, we kind of drifted apart. And then fortunately, there's my friend, Wimve Law. I'll just put her handle up there. Um, she consults. She does consult like virtually. I'd consult virtually with her or in Dumbeni. And she 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 helps me quite a lot you know she interprets my dreams she sees things for me and she'll call me she's like yo i had a dream this and this happened so i think you need to do this and this or be careful of this and this for myself personally i've grown in the sense that see i've i know which clothes i have to wear now i dream about that see those the beads that i need see those dream about those so my prophecies are more in dreams more than anything um i dream about strangers i dream about people on instagram that i've never spoken to before i dream about very insensitive like very sensitive things um i'm told someone is pregnant someone terminated um someone needs a cleansing someone is about to die or that can be prevented you know so i'll just hit you up in the dms and be like yo i had a dream one two three and four and just relay the messages that i feel i need to relay yeah boy silly example there was someone on instagram that i'd never spoken to before like she was a mutual and i'd follow her and she had a trip to Swaziland that was like pending and it happened that something bad was going to happen to them by Swaziland, so she had to consult first i woke up in the morning i'm like yo this is probably weird i tested her but um i see you going to Swaziland, and i think you just need to consult before to see if it's safe to go and she's like, yo, dude, I actually have a wedding that I'm supposed to attend in Swaziland. I think she ended up not going. I don't know what happened after that. My duty is just to deliver. Um, for example, man, forty, like there was a lady that was pregnant. I'm not gonna mention her, but she's very popular. She was pregnant, and at the time, I think she was uncomfortable with people knowing that she's pregnant, right? Rightfully so. And I had the dream. She first mized. She was like, Oh, I wonder what it means. Oh. I'm like, girl, you're pregnant. But she didn't tell me until like months later and then she was like yo did you actually write but i was still like in my very early stages of pregnancy and i was protecting it blah blah so that's what happens i'm that gifted person so yeah i pray i whatever and i'm just like growing um anga twasi maybe i will to initiate and in order to be a sangoma maybe i will later in my life but now I just do the basics of getting to know what's going on how things are done what is 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 so possibly if i do need to toss out i don't have to go through the longevity process of being a beginner so i'm basically just studying and stuff so yeah guys that's my story of how i got my calling this is who i am that's how i see things some some things come as visions like when i'm really just chilling and i feel like i'm overthinking but it's that and then clamp i'll talk to okoku bubese and i'll be like hey did i think about something it's like you're actually right that's whatever was going on and then mm, i look so beautiful there's this light that's just coming over me and like hmm so i've got these literally by what do you guys call it i don't know what it's called in english but e e by e by is pig sorry is pig is pig yeah so this is called is pig e by other other clots one that i'm going to find out and i'll show you the others so i'm running very late let me just go and yeah, you guys will spend the day with me, Elozine. Till the time.
is a very quick stop. This is called Diagonal Street. I parked down here, but just after the stop sign where all the other people are is where I bought Kakuriava. Is where I bought my thing. So it's probably like the second shop from the stop sign where the river is. Whew. Yeah, that's where I got my stuff. Here's my stuff. I needed these two other clouds. And then the third one I'm gonna waste it. In 100 meters, turn right on Gerard Sakoto Street. Was your school even cool if they didn't take you to Saibono? Like, why did they not take you to it's Saibono? Meters. So right it's near. Towards Blue it's near the market thingy. It's near the market square. Um. Yeah, it's near the market square because I just left that place like two minutes ago. So I got the red, black and white because it goes with my beads, it goes with the rest of my outfits. I was worried when I get there. Unfortunate that I'm gonna keep his stash, but it's not to go to mom. So we are gone. Oh, I'm being